Welcome to ECA Limo, Learning Simplified, and welcome to this lesson. In the first topic of Form 1, we discussed physics, and we defined the physics as the study of matter and its relation to energy. We also looked at the three main uh, branches, all states of matter, where we said we have solids, liquids, and gases. However, we did not discuss so deep about what makes solids, what makes liquids, and what makes gases, and how those particles which make solids, liquids, and gases behave under different conditions, especially under change in temperature. Now, in this lesson, we are going to discuss investigating the nature of matter. My name is Albert. I hope you will enjoy the lesson and our new topic. By the end of this lesson, I expect you to be able to define matter and state its three main states and then describe simple experiments which you can perform to prove that matter exists in small particles. So entire in this topic, you are going to realize that matter is made up of very small particles. So you have to describe at least four experiments that you can perform in order to prove that indeed matter exists in small particles. Now, what is the nature of matter? This is a very simple but very important question to every scientist. And before we embark to serious business in physics in describing matter, I'm going to give very few Riemann examples so that you understand better. And my first question is, if you have a cup of this, you have a cup, and then you have a juice which is full to the brim. And this juice is one liter. Do you drink the whole one liter at once? No. You just have sips. Sips, after a short time, you can have a sip until the juice will end. All will be depleted. Now, what if you have the same juice which is one liter, and you have a friend who has an empty cup and they need the juice. What can you do? Is it able to divide the juice into two so that you take equal a portion? It is true. You can divide this juice into two so that you have a half a liter, a half a liter, and then your friend also have a half a liter. Now, what if your friend get a friend who needs the juice? And the friend had a cup. This friend can divide this a half a liter into half another half, which is going to be a quarter. So this friend can have a quarter here, and then this one will remain with a half. What does that mean? A juice is an example of a liquid, and a liquid is an example of a state of matter. So it means liquids, which is matter, can be divided into small portions. Now, let's go to solids. You have a biscuit here. You have a biscuit of this size. And then you are three, and all of you want to eat the same biscuit. Is it, is it possible to divide this biscuit into three uh, pieces so that each one of you can eat? Yes, you can decide to cut this biscuit into three equal portions, where one will take one piece, the second person, and the third person. Now, what if the third person get a friend who also need the biscuit? The third person can still cut this biscuit into two, so that he eats one, then the other one eats the other piece. Now, a biscuit is an example of a solid. Now, this solid was one biscuit, but you can still divide it into two portions, three portions, and even more. So it means a solid, which is an example of a state of matter, can still be divided into smaller pieces. The third example which I'm going to give is if you have bought your perfume. Do you use it at once? The moment you, you, you place on it, you use it at once? No, you can use it every day, like for a whole month. A, a perfume is an example of a gas. So it means also gases can be divided into smaller pieces. That's why you can use that perfume uh, every day for more than uh, one month. 
So it means the states of matter can be divided. If you have a gas, you can divide it into smaller pieces. If you have a solid, you can divide it into smaller pieces. And if you have a liquid, you can divide it into smaller portions. So that is the nature of matter that we are going to discuss. So in this case, matter is defined as anything that occupies space and has mass. Anything that occupies space and has mass. And we have three main states of matter. I said we have many, but we are going to discuss three main. That is solid, liquid, and gas. And then matter is not uh, continuous, but it's made up of very tiny or small particles. And that's what we are going to discuss in this topic, particulate nature of matter. Particulate nature of matter means we are going to study matter in small pieces. We have many set of experiments which we can perform to prove that matter is made up of small particles. But in our case, we are going to consider a few cases and we are going to start from solids. So in this uh, case, we are going to consider a piece of paper. And I urge you students to take a piece of paper so that we prove this together. Uh, after you have taken your piece of paper, I've taken mine here on the screen. This is my piece of paper. It's a paper. I want you to divide it into two equal parts. Divide it into two equal parts so that you have part one and part two. Now, after you have done that, I want you to have uh, one of the parts here. So put one side, like put one aside and then let's continue with part two. Part two is here now. It's smaller. It has been reduced. This is our part two. I want you to cut part two into smaller, uh, into two equal parts again. Take this cut into two equal parts, so that now you have part three and part four. Now put part three aside. Let's go with part four. Let's go with part four. Part four will look like this. It's now reduced. That is part four. Part four. Now part four. I want you to cut it into two equal parts again. Part four, cut it into two equal parts, so that you have part five and part six. Now put part five aside, continue with part uh, six. You have part six here, very small. Then part six, I want you to cut it into two, cut it into two so that you have part seven, and part eight, then now put part seven apart. Let's go with part eight. If you take part eight, you put it there. You can see this paper as we are cutting it is reducing into smaller, smaller pieces. And you can cut it until you cannot be able to cut it anymore. It will be very small drops. And if you are careful, if you can recombine it, it will still become a whole paper. So this experiment of cutting a piece of paper into smaller pieces until you cannot cut it anymore is one of the proof that solids can be, is, are made up of very small particles. So another experiment to prove that solids exist in small particles, if you take a piece of chalk, take a piece of chalk like this one, and then this is our chalk, then you knock it, you knock using a hammer or even you grind it with your hand. What you will realize, this chalk will become, a, it will form chalk dust. It will form chalk dust. It will form very small particles, which we call the chalk dust. Chalk dust. This means the particles which were making this chalk when it was in solid state when, or when it was as a whole are very small size that they, you compare them with the dust. So that proves that matter is made up of very small particles. So just like solids, we can still prove that liquids also exist in small particles. And what you do, we are going to consider our experiment here where we are going to use a saturated purple potassium permanganate or potassium manganate 7. Or we can also use copper 2 solvent, which is blue. But in this case, let's consider a purple potassium manganese 7. 
we are going to use a saturated solution of the same saturated means it has it is pure purple color so it is very pure purple here you have purple potassium manganese 7 which is the pure purple that's when we say it is saturated so if you have it like that this is saturated purple potassium manganese 7 so if you have it like that then now what you're going to do i want you to divide it into two if you divide it into two it means you will have half of it and that half of it you put it inside another beaker so you will take half take half of it and put it inside another beaker it will occupy a very small uh, uh, volume down there then after putting it now you add water you add water to the brim you add water to the top of this uh, beaker two now this is beaker one this is beaker two if you add water to the top what you will realize there will be a color which is purple of potassium and seven all through and then it will be mixed with the color of water so the purple color will reduce the purple color will not be the same as when it was saturated so it will be a mixture like that it will fade the color will fade and then now if you take the solution that you have formed here you divide it into uh, you take a very small portion like the level the like the level that you took from the first beaker you take a very small level like that you put it in beaker three now you put it in beaker three and then you also add water what you will realize if you add water to the top it means the amount of water will be more than the amount of the color of purple potassium manganese which will be there so in this case you will have your water and then you will have some piece of purple color distributed within this solution and again if you take a very small portion again of the of the solution in a, a beaker three you put in another beaker as beaker four let's say you have beaker four there you put it in beaker four you put it a very small amount and then you add water to the top you realize that even the purple color might not even appear you will have the color fading until you cannot see the purple color anymore what does that mean this saturated solution had is made up of very small pieces or small particles when you put a very small amount of it inside a beaker and you add water those particles which were making the first solution will redistribute themselves within the solution or the water that you have added and therefore the color or the particles will be very far away from each other and the color will be less intense when you define the second beaker the particles which will move to the third beaker now will be very small if you add water to the top the particles will distribute themselves and they will be very far away from each other when these particles are very far away from each other you cannot even see their color but you can see it at a very uh, small intensity now when you divide it further you are going to realize that even the purple color will almost disappear that means the particles which were making the first uh, solution here which is pure purple are very small if you divide them or if you separate them you can separate them into smaller and smaller pieces so in that case you prove that liquids also are made up of very small particles which can be separated you can still perform an experiment to prove that matter is made up of small particles and what you do you take your round bottomed flask like that like this one here then you put some solid salt you put some solid salt down there this is salt which is solid and then you add water carefully you add water carefully using a burette until the water fills this uh, flask and then you take a stopper and seal all cork the, uh, at the top there so you add slowly without shaking so that the salt cannot dissolve before you start your experiment so you fill this uh, flask to the brim then what you do you take this flask now there is no space there you shake you shake this flask severally 
what you will realize after shaking is that the flask that you had like this one here it was corked at the top here and the liquid was full at this point now you will realize that there will be a space which will be left up there there's a space left this is magic and then this salt that we had down there is no longer there there's no salt there's no solid inside this a flask now what happened to our solid solid it means the solid that we had it was in very large grains of salt that solid dissolved so here we don't have no solid no uh, solid left then now we will have this is a solution. So the solid that we had dissolved to form a solution. But that solid was very large. We can see it or we could see it. Now we can't see it. What does that mean? The particles which were making the salt are very small in such a way that when they dissolve in water, we cannot see them using our eyes. That means that solids like salt are made up of very small particles uh, which we cannot see with our eyes. Now, the content was full. Now the volume has been reduced. What, that, what does that mean? It means the water which we used as our solvent has some spaces where this solid which dissolved entered or uh, packed itself. So it means this uh, liquid or this water has some spaces. But can we see the spaces in this liquid? No, we cannot see them. So what does that mean? If there are spaces inside water and you cannot see them, it means also water has is made up of very small particles and those small particles between them there are spaces which as particles of a solid like salt can uh, pack itself so these two prove that both liquids both liquids and solids are made up of very small particles and this experiment we call it dilution experiment since we have described how to prove that solids and liquids are made up of small particles, we are remained with the third state of matter, that is, our gases. So, to prove that gases are made of small particles, we do an experiment which we call penetrating a smoke, a smoky room experiment, where if you have a room like this, and then it's full of smoke, it's full of smoke particles like that, and the room is closed. If the room has a very high concentration of smoke, this smoke, then you have windows and doors which are closed. Then if you want to reduce the concentration of this smoke, you open the window. Immediately you open the window. If you are inside the room, you will realize that the intensity of the smoke will decrease slowly. And if you are outside, you can even see the smoke moving out slowly. That one will take some a couple of time. It means the smoke which was inside was not as a, a group so that it can move once out. It can only move slowly. It means the particles which make smoke can be separated into smaller particles which can move out slowly until after some time the room will be penetrated. So this one uh, uh, can prove or it can be used to prove that indeed gases are made up of small particles which can be separated and spread out. So I'm leaving you with an assignment and the question is, it is possible to dissolve sugar in tea with milk. If you have tea with milk, you can dissolve sugar inside without any noticeable increase in volume of tea. Explain. This is your assignment. Kindly attempt it. And if you have any challenge, visit ECLIMU learning simplified for more questions and solutions so that is the end of our lesson today and since we have discussed and discovered that matter is made up of very small particles in the next lesson we are going to see how are these particles arranged within the solid structure liquid structure and gaseous structure